Let's now work through another example. Again, our client has given us a task and once again, we have a way to WhatsApp our client to check in case some aspect of the task is not clear. This time, our client wants us to write a function numVowels that takes a string as an argument and it returns an integer. So it's supposed to count the number of vowels in a string and once again our client has helped us by saying well for example if I give you the string cat since that only has one vowel I want you to return the answer. But here is an opportunity for you to ask me any clarifying questions you might have. So let's go ahead to code check and make sure we understand this task. So let's ask our client. On the input cat she's expecting the answer to be one. What about on a different input like let's say India? How many vowels do you think there are in India? Do you think there are three vowels? Do you think there are only two vowels? Because you can see that I appears twice, but it's the same vowel, it's just I. So we have found an input on which we can imagine two different answers, perhaps two, perhaps three. So this is a good input to clarify on. Let's click on code check. And our client says, she's expecting the answer two. So she's perhaps not making a distinction between uppercase I and lowercase I. In her mind, that's the same vowel. Let's confirm this. Let's try a few other inputs. Let me just try an input like this, right? What is our client expecting here? Maybe our client is just simply counting each vowel distinctly. So maybe since she's not making a distinction between upper and lower case, she's just saying, well, there's really only one vowel here, just the letter I. Let's confirm. Are we, is she expecting the answer to be one on this input? No, on this input also, she's expecting the answer to be two. So here you have to really think, what exactly does our client want? Now, a real world client, you probably will be able to ask. You might be able to show her all these inputs and say, look, I'm really not sure what you're saying. So can you please rephrase exactly what you have in mind? In order to help you develop this skill, I'm only going to give you the ability to ask specific questions and then you have to somehow infer what is in your client's mind. You might think that I'm making the problem much harder for you uh, by restricting your ability to ask general questions. I'm only letting you ask specific questions. But I want you to trust me that this is an important ability to develop, your ability to generalize from a small number of examples. You have to choose the examples and then you will generalize. Now in this case it turns out that our client doesn't care about uppercase vowels. Let me convince you of that. Suppose I just give uppercase vowels A, E, I, O, U, all capital letters. You might be expecting the answer to be five here but when you click on code check, you will see that the answer is just zero. So our client is simply ignoring uppercase letters. Now here you might be very frustrated. You might say, well, what a silly client. Why couldn't she just say that? Remember, the client is not a programmer. The client may not even be aware that there is a difference in programming between uppercase and lowercase letters and she was just expecting lowercase letters. It is you, the programmer, who knows that Python strings can contain uppercase letters. You must ask. You must understand what is in the client's mind. The client wants you to ignore uppercase vowels. It would have been nice if she could say that up front. But I want you to develop the ability of asking. That I know is not an ability we have developed all through our schooling. All through our schooling, every problem that we saw was perfectly specified. All the details that we needed 
were in the problem. But the real world is not like that. And if you want to be ready for the real world, you must develop this important ability to ask clarifying questions. So now we have a better sense of what the client wants. But unfortunately, we don't know enough yet about strings to actually write the code. So first, let's learn a little bit about strings and then we can come back and write the code that our client really wants.